The identity of the Observer is something we have discussed a few times throughout these theory videos, suggesting he's the nurse's husband as well as Felix's father, but maybe we're thinking about it in the wrong way. Today we are going to explore what is likely the best exploration of the Observer in the lore, and that's the Arcus entries, of which there are quite a few, beginning with Arcus 01 and ending with Arcus 9873, with many others in between. Now, of course, we don't have all 9000 plus entries that there are, we only have around 50 or so, but they still give us a good idea of the progression of the Observer. Let's begin with Arcus 01, where the Observer accounts what we can assume is his first time entering the tower, and discovering the library in which we see him sit in game. This particular cutscene appears to depict his arrival, and upon it, he discovers a corpse in the chair which he later sits. I would start at the beginning, but I don't know when that was or how long ago I was banished to this prison. What I know is I've been observing and studying the inner workings of this entity that had once been, well, an obsession. How ironic that I should be sentenced to live out the rest of my days in the very thing I sought to destroy, an obsession turned prison, as all obsessions are, I suppose. So when he arrives at the tower, he seems generally confused, understandable, but also sure that he's been sent here to be punished in some form and that the entity's realm is a prison. Further in Arcus 02, we discover that there have definitely been, prior to the Observer, other observers, or others who have lived in the tower and fulfilled a similar role, in this similar prison. If we jump quickly over to Obscura Unknown Prisoners, this documents the other prisoners or observers that have existed in the tower, again, at least seemingly. Now, an interesting way to look at this is that the observer as we know him appears to be in a similar situation to the survivors, except separated into a different sub-realm from the main entity's realm where the trials occur. Despite this, he appears to not only know about the trials, but also is capable of viewing them himself, mentioning in Arcus 8875 where he comments on a survivor suffering from a wound. Further, he mentions in Arcus 893 a time where some survivors went mad trying to escape, dashing their heads against walls and drowning one another in mud. This entry also references the survivors becoming dimmer and dimmer the more trials they go through as they are drained of their energy and emotions. And again, this seems to be a similar thing that happens to the Observer or Observers. These Observers have clearly also fallen into insanity in some way, with prior Observers going on rants and raving in a seemingly pretty nonsense way. One of the notes from the Obscura is this one, which maybe gives us an idea of the mindset of previous observers. Now, from the Dead by Daylight mobile release cutscene, we can see what we presume is the Void, where all of the previous survivors or stolen souls have been taken and then discarded by the Entity. The Void is a sub-realm of the Entity's realm, also, and so resides in a similar way to the one the Observer is in. We can probably also assume then that these past Observers are also tossed into the void when they go insane and are no longer useful, but this also suggests that the Entity is purposefully placing the Observers within the tower and within this sub-realm in order to use them for… something. You know, in the same way that the Survivors are used for a direct source of sustenance, the Observers are surely fueling the Entity in some other way if there have been multiple, seemingly all searching the archives and taking memories from the rift. This surely means too that this whole process is actively assisting the entity even if it doesn't seem so, and even if it appears that the entity cannot reach the observer. From what we understand, the entity is one with the fog, and the fog surrounds the observer's tower probably entity-controlled fog too, as it trips and grabs him whenever he goes outside. So he could be reached or grabbed out if the entity wanted, but instead he's being kept there alive. The Observer is noted in Arcus 182 to be from the Terra world Terra Primus, and presumably the entity or ancient one as it's often referred to is from the world Terra Dark. Looking into the Observer's homeworld Terra Primus, we can find a good amount out about who he is. Primus in Latin means first, which suggests that the Observer's Terra World is the first known one, or the first to be created, the Terra World that preceded all of the others. From his world, it's noted in Arcus 182 that structures within the Entity's realm remind him of his home. This doesn't narrow it down all too much, as there are structures from many different time periods. In this same Arcus entry, he also refers to the Entity's realm as the Infernal Dimension probably referring to it as hell, basically. The Observer later relates to this by talking about a different terror version of Dante's Inferno that he reads. At the end of this entry, the Observer talks about how his people had managed to bridge between different dimensions, a fact that changed the way they viewed things. In Arcus 293, we gain the understanding that the fog acts the way it does because it's auric fog. Auric particles, described in Arcus 54, are particles that make the dimension as a whole conscious and capable of manifesting things out of the fog. It's also mentioned that the entity is far more ancient than we, as in the Observer's Terra Primus people, 
ever suspected. In Arcus 557 this is furthered, mentioning, The entity is almost suddenly pure consciousness. The observable fact of existence is the material world responds to and changes with consciousness. Collective consciousness is the key. The body, the home, the trial. All of it is an expression of the entity's unconscious need for fear and terror. The distinct observation in the specimens chosen by the entity is that they all come from worlds that have failed to understand the metaphysical relationship between their thoughts and the world they live in. Victims who know this truth and have honed their ability to manifest could be poisonous to the entity. This leads me to believe the entity is attracted to dark worlds because darkness and chaos are clear indicators that inhabitants have failed to connect the dots between the collective consciousness and the health of their world. The conclusion then might be that the entity feeds off ignorance. So with this in mind, the trial surely cannot be the entity's main source of sustenance if it does indeed feed off of ignorance. If this is the reason behind it wiping the survivor's memories not to feel fear and hope each time, but to remain ignorant, then the trials remain ineffective because the survivors do in fact seem self-aware, the killers also. We know this from the characters that have escaped the realm, such as the Observer himself, as well as Vigo, who was potentially once a survivor himself. Benedict also. The survivors in many ways are ignorant, but the thing is they only remain that way in the sense the Observer means when they are within their own terror worlds and stories and not inside of the Entity's realm, where survival is all that matters. What ignorance is the Entity feeding off of then? Again, clearly the trials aren't entirely effective due to the amount of resets that have been done previously. The Entity is apparently older than the Observer, who came from Terra Primus, the first dimension or world, and on that world they called the Entity Ancient, meaning the Entity precedes Terra Primus and the Observer, and therefore humanity across all dimensions. If sustenance comes from hope and emotion and such, in the way we as humans understand, then where was the entity gaining this sustenance from prior to the human race, which came after it existing? Because despite all of the omniverse and further all of the dimensions, humans appear to be the only intelligent race aside that of the entity that appears within the realm. Everything is at the very least humanoid or a reflection of the world as we know it, such as Demogorgon's Upside Down, which is just a dark mirror of the regular world and not another planet or otherworldly thing. This leads me to believe that the Entity is the Observer. Let me explain myself. To begin this next section, I want you to consider what we know about the Observer and the things he can see and interact with. First, he can create objects from the fog with just his fingertips, much like the Entity can, but just with claws instead. From what we understand, he can see through the fog and see the memories of those who reside within it. The Observer is the only character we know of to interact with the very same lore that seems to deeply affect the characters, typically at their turning points that result in them being taken by the Entity. In Arcus 1256, the Observer suggests that Evan McMillan was being corrupted prior to being taken and corrupted by the Entity. From what we can tell though, the Entity in its claw spidery form does not have the capability to do this, as the fog can't really reach the people outside of its realm. But someone say who could hone this ability down through a tool like the Auris could directly affect memory and draw the subjects it wanted into its realm and have a chance of corrupting someone. This realm in its entirety is also constructed of buildings and objects that are human. Another thing which is as previously mentioned by the Observer are from his own homeworld, and so are probably human also. A big thing is that the Observer claims himself to potentially be a dishonest narrator, who possibly could be in a dreamlike state or simply being deceived of what he is actually viewing. In Arcus entry 8789 we can read, after bodies appear in the tower, that he forgets how they came to be there, whether he created them or the entity did. Which which is a strange confusion to have. He discovers other strange things suddenly appearing, such as in Arcus 7294, where he finds a mound of purple flesh and gore. He later seems to experience the void within the memory, as if he has been there before, or someone else prior has been, as seen in Arcus 1032. He seems to certainly be falling to the same fate that those in the void fell to, which is insanity from the many memories he's experienced, the length or overextension of his life, and his loneliness. In Arcus 985 he states, I am wondering how do I keep myself out of my own creations? The memories I attempt to record as fast as I experience them prove one thing to me. They show me objectivity is impossible, or elusive at best, and I'm never quite sure if my logs are a true and accurate depiction of the subject's memory or a whiskey-laden interpretation of a nightmare. In this section, he appears to be questioning the very fact of his existence and its reliability within the realm itself, with inclusions of the memories and their validity also. Finally, we have the observers fall into enjoying the trials as he nears 10,000 in Arcus entries suggesting he has been there in the tower for a long time now, 
possibly up to the current point. We see this in Arcus 9082, Arcus 8875, and the final known entry, Arcus 9873. The final one is him enjoying a memory of David King scaring a man. This is just a little thing, but his attitude suddenly changes over time. He seems to enjoy the pain of others. My suggestion simply is that the entity has a far more complex system of obtaining sustenance, and one that includes it utilizing an embodiment of itself in which it locks itself away in a tower, alone and only with the Oris and memories of the trial, which it lies to its observer self that it feeds on. The reality being that the entity is far too large, far too large to be sustained by just some trials and the little hope it could gain from the survivors and killers, who were all eventually tossed into the void. The only thing capable of feeding the entity, and the only thing still around to do so, is the entity itself, as otherwise it's possibly consumed everything. With use of its embodiment as the observer, it feeds on its own ignorance of its surroundings, attempting to take itself down and end the trials, which function is no more than a show for itself to be distracted by in its human or observer form and draw from its own loneliness, insanity, and ignorance of the long life it has lived. But once it experiences the memories enough, it begins to remember what it has been doing, and forces itself to reset the realm and the observer that it embodies, returning once again as someone new, and walking back up to the tower to start over fresh. This is the only way the entity can bear to live. Death is not an escape for a being so large, powerful, and endless. Death is not an escape for the immortal, and so it has tried to make it bearable. It has consumed all else, and now with only itself left, it has manifested a world where it can feed on its own lie. Okay, that's 